Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the grounding of the A320 fleet. I'm Jeffrey Thomas, and I'm delighted to say joined by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. And it's a late good evening to you, Richard. And a early good morning to you, Jeffrey. Yes, I'm in Melbourne, Australia at the moment. So viewers, this is episode 280, A320 grounding upheaval. Operators of some 6,000 Airbus A320 family aircraft scrambled over the past weekend to undertake software modifications to mitigate the risk of uncommanded flight control inputs from what the manufacturer terms intense solar radiation. A European Union Safety Agency, EASA Emergency Airworthiness Directive, EAD, Issued November 28, effective November 29, orders operators to ensure their aircraft have serviceable elevator Aralon computers, ELACs, before further flights. The EAD is based on a November 28 Airbus message to all operators. The EAD said, An Airbus A320 aircraft recently experienced an uncommanded and limited pitch-down event. The autopilot remained engaged throughout the event with a brief and limited loss of altitude and the rest of the flight was uneventful. The subsequent investigation identified a vulnerability with the ELACB hardware fitted with software L104 in case of exposure to solar flares. This identified vulnerability could lead, in the worst-case scenario, to an uncommanded elevator movement and that may result in exceeding the aircraft structural capability. This is limited to ELACB standard L104. All previous ELACB software standards, as well as the ELACE software standards, are not affected. The grounding, albeit short-lived in most cases, came on the busiest weekend of the year in the US, Thanksgiving, to the world's most widely used aircraft, impacting 60% of the active fleet of well over 9,000 aircraft. Richard, you have some numbers on the impact. Yes, and it's uh, difficult actually to find out the exact numbers. Now, the Airbus A320 family comprises the A318, A319, A320, and A321. In total, there are 41 variants of the A319, 320, 321, which are affected. In total, 13,297 aircraft in this category have been registered. But after rejecting duplicates based on test flight registrations or leasing company registrations, 12,097 have actually been delivered. And currently there are 11,235 in service. And as we mentioned, not all the aircraft have the uh, ELACB L104 unit, but around 6,000 aircraft are affected. The number of the A320 family seen airborne since the emergency airworthiness directive was issued has varied between 2,197 and 3,062 aircraft, on average around 2,600 aircraft. And this is far short of the previous level of over 5,600 aircraft airborne at any one time. So, Richard, uh, has there been a large number of delays and cancellations uh, from this uh, grounding? Yes, indeed there have been a large number of flight disruptions. Now, some of these disruptions are due in part to severe weather. And in some cases in the US, the ATC and security check personnel shortages as a result of the shutdown 
um, also cause problems. But layered on top of this, there are significant issues from the Airbus A320 family of aircraft. In terms of the uh, flight disruptions, uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport in America and Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport in Australia were the worst hit due to weather conditions. But globally, 12% of the flights were cancelled, which involved uh, A320 family aircraft. Uh, that's now reducing to 10%. And this is well above the normal 1% to 3% level. And 28% of the flights were delayed. That's now reducing to 12%. But this is still double the normal level. So getting back, getting on to the, the issue, Richard, uh, can you give the viewers uh, some analysis of what the airlines have to do? I, th I think it's really it's quite complex. It, it is. And uh, so it's, first of all, it's limited to the Airbus A320 family with the uh, ELACB standard and the L104 uh, software. Mm. And depending on the aircraft uh, elevator aileron computer, the ELAC unit version, and the data loading capabilities of that uh, particular version, and the software version installed, L103, L103 Plus, or L104, airlines have to perform one of the uh, two following tasks. Either they upload the L103 Plus software as per the AMM 2793-006001 and thereby revert to the previous software version, or they have to replace the ELAC unit, which means remove the affected ELAC unit and to install the new one with the L103 Plus software. It is actually quite a complex process, as you say, and uh, we're showing uh, some screenshots of the more detailed instructions required. There are 15 major points in the instructions. So it depends in each case which ELAC unit is actually installed on the aircraft that's affected. There are uh, three types of situation. The ELACB, which is non-data loadable, so the only way to modify uh, a non-data loadable unit is to replace it. The second version, there is a data loadable, but the aircraft has no data loading capability. So you can't modify by uploading software, you have to replace it. And the third is it does have a data loading capability and you just have to download the new software version and upload it and that takes about two hours. The majority appear to be doing this uh, third version, downloading the software. And interesting to note, most of the delays are around two hours. Mm. I'm sort of a bit whimsical here, I'm Richard. I'm thinking of when you have to, you know, on your home computer, load some software, some new software or download some new software, and it gets to 98% and says software download failed, start again. <laughs> yeah, I hope you, do, I hope, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> I hope the operators didn't experience that problem. Um, but more seriously, um, Richard, uh, this also takes us back to the 787 our coverage of the 787 incident or tragic tr crash, I should say, with Air India. And a number of viewers asked about whether airlines had to report back to Boeing on completing uh, ADs. 
What has Airbus instructed operators to do in this particular case? Yeah, well, Airbus um, has told operators uh, to report back and, and in detail, and I quote from the Emergency Airworthiness Directive, address your acknowledgement and accomplishment results to Airbus customer services through the in-service alerts and information cockpit tile on Airbus World by using the referenced AOT page. And they go into great detail of the reporting sheet that they want uh, uh, each operator to, to fill out. And that has to be done within one week after the accomplishment. And if they have any questions, they should address that to Airbus customer services through the tech request on Airbus World. Uh, so there's a very detailed and uh, very significant follow through on every one of these aircraft and the modification. And if they have any questions on the retrofit, uh, then they should uh, contact uh, Airbus retrofit services. And there's an, even an email address provided for that purpose. Mm. Now, solar radiation is suspected in the QF72 incident of 2008, which we covered recently, talking with the pilot, uh, Captain uh, Kevin Sullivan. As we know, solar radiation can spike because of space weather and is typically associated with uh, coronial mass ejections from the sun, uh, according to NOAA. Uh, and according to NOAA, 2025 is a peak activity year uh, in the current solar weather cycle. Can you give us a bit more background on that, Richard? Yeah, the solar cycle is approximately every 11 years and as you say it's currently peaking it uh, peaked previously in 2014 which was when mh370 uh, mm. disappeared the uh, regulators uh, have now publicly detailed that there is evidence pointing towards solar radiation susceptibility. And that's what's prompted the urgent EASA and FAA actions. Um, so this concept is, is not new. As you say, we saw it in 2008 with uh, the Qantas uh, issue. What happens, high energy particles from space or from the sun in particular, uh, can trigger avionic anomalies. The abrupt pitch down on the Qantas A330 in October 2008, for example, was traced to intermittent data spikes from one of the aircraft's air data inertial reference units. And the Australian investigation could not conclusively identify the initiating of event, but did not rule out a so-called single event effect, an SEE, and which is a momentary disruption in the electronic component caused by a cosmic particle strike. More recently, a JetBlue flight on the 30th of October 2025, en route from Cancun in Mexico to New York uh, in the US, had to divert to Tampa in Florida. It happened around 1800s UTC on the 30th of October. Several passengers were hospitalized uh, fortunately, with non-life-threatening injuries. And the solar flare index from the sun at the time was at KP5+, plus, which is fairly high on the scale. And back in 2008, on the QF72 uh, accident, we reported 
electromagnetic interference uh, can have many causes magnetic or electrical storms cosmic neutrons solar storms ground-based radar or communication facilities aircraft systems not properly shielded or grounded and even passenger personal electronic devices so we need to get i think to the bottom of this microchips can be hardened against the influence of so-called single event effects uh, see and especially against radiation induced bit flips or so-called single event upsets in microchips the ATSB concluded in the case of QF72 there is insufficient evidence to estimate the likelihood however it now appears that Airbus and the EASA have determined it's not only likely but it can be catastrophic and until the root cause data are released, the chip level data, the environmental data, the FDR data, uh, one has to remain cautious. We don't yet know whether this was an extreme edge case, a rare solar flare and an unlucky system state, or a broader latent design flaw but at least uh, Airbus and EASA have taken the precaution of grounding all the Airbus A320 affected uh, aircraft until the issue has been resolved. And of course, we must uh, state here that um, solar radiation is not the exclusive province of Airbus aeroplanes. It also impacts Boeing aeroplanes as well and any other aircraft mm. when um, air crew fly they have a limit on how many flying hours per month they can uh, uh, allow and there's a limit because when you're at altitude you're exposed um, outside the earth's uh, atmosphere to higher radiation levels and on the surface of the earth we are protected because the atmosphere absorbs quite a lot of uh, uh, the radiation effects i mean you're still advised not to go out into uh, bl blue sky and sunshine without uh, uh, the proper skin protection but mm. uh, at altitude it's a different matter and uh, yeah, you need to be uh, careful how many hours a month uh, uh, you're flying. Mm, absolutely. So, Richard, look, thank you very much indeed for this update on the Airbus A320 grounding, and it's good to see that uh, you know, the airlines have been able to quickly get a lot of the fleet back in the air. Obviously, there's there's a number that uh, require that new com um, computer and uh, that'll be interesting to see how quickly they can get hold of those. Um, but uh, thank you once again. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I think uh, it's interesting to note how quickly um, Airbus and EASA uh, react also how quickly NTSB and Boeing react in the case of the UPS yeah. uh, accident um, mm. and I can only hope other uh, operators and other regulators uh, follow their example. Yeah it's been outstanding uh, very quick and very positive and um, yeah I agree absolutely. So viewers, look, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to us. Please like us. Please keep those great comments coming and those wonderful uh, and wonderful questions, even though they're challenging from time to time. And to those who are supporting us, thank you very much indeed. We really do appreciate it very much. And uh, as I said, please do subscribe because the, uh, the hunt for MH370 is coming up soon. And this is the place, this is the channel you're going to want to tune into to get the very, very latest from Richard and uh, also um, some input from Blaine Gibson as well. 
So uh, thank you again, Richard. You're welcome.